A new poll says Americans think the country is moving in the wrong direction. Optimism about where we are headed as a nation over the next year dropping nearly 20 points since May, with 55% saying they felt pessimistic about the future. But can you blame them? Try walking down the street in any major liberal city. NYPD releasing new video of a brutal mugging showing the effects of an unpoliced city. A lowlife repeatedly punching and kicking a 68-year-old man. It's as old as Kilmeade. Knocking him unconscious and then rifling through his pockets. I wonder if the press will be as attentive to these videos as they were for those in which police were involved. But progressive Democrats who pushed for less police aren't worried. They're too busy hiring their own private security to keep them safe. Campaign filings reveal squad member Cory Bush spent 70 grand on private security while calling to defund police. Trey Gowdy ripping into the hypocrisy. I don't know about your city or state, but $70,000 would get you your own personal police officer in South Carolina, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Cori Bush tells us she is progressive. The better word might be hypocritical. She wants to defund your police while she has a robust personal security detail in Washington and St. Louis. It's Trey Gowdy, Dana. You're aware of him. Yes, Trey. Great Trey show Gowdy. on the weekend. Congrats. Welcome back. Good to see you. And you're so brave. Thank you. You really. You. I feel a lot better now. <laughs> yes, exactly. Help me keep strong. Yeah, that's good. Um. So anyway, we're seeing these videos now. The police are, I believe, realizing how important it is to show what's going on on the street, because for so long, all you saw were the bat, the, the things in which they were involved in, and now we're seeing what happens when the police aren't around. I'd like to coin a phrase. This is what you can do when you fight fire with fire. Mm, there you um, go. But I think that the videos are the things that pe people are reacting to. Yeah. And we saw that, and as you mentioned, obviously, uh, there, when there have been uh, videotapes of police brutality. Mm -hmm. uh, we have seen that and there is a big reaction to it. Um, I think that some of these videos, like, I don't know why all of a sudden like, the NYPD is doing this, but I would imagine it's because they realize that we need to be explicit and be persuasive. One of the ways that you're persuasive is to show. Yeah. And they have the video and it's there for everyone to see and something like that can spur action. Right. Um, can I comment on the poll? Yes. Because it takes a long time to build up enough trust to get to a 64% approval rating mm -hmm. uh, in, and just like a moment to lose it. But they're blowing past all the stop signs. Mm -hmm. like, you could, I, mean, I guess they don't watch Fox. You could do like a Fox News alert. Here, FYI, immigration, right. crime, um, the pandemic response, the um, inflation, education, there's all these things. But they're so focused on trying to pass $5 trillion in long-term spending and all these things that they want to do, which on their merits, look, like have a fight about it. But if that doesn't pass, or like even if it does pass, all of these other things are happening, and we're living in the middle of this political realignment, right. that they might really have something that they're going to have to deal with. The fact that, um, that they're at the White House thinking, oh, gosh, maybe we should do something. Like a speech is not going to fix this. Right. The only thing that can fix this is a policy pivot. Mm -hmm. And I don't think we're going to get one. Yeah, they can't admit. They're still the, the, they can't admit that they were wrong for so long. I, Brian, you're used to that. Uh, the experts, <laughs> experts say the rise in pessimism, pessimism is directly related to you hosting the 7 p.m. primetime. Well, I, 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 study. I wrote this study. I didn't say anything about that. And notice I'm not doing it this week. So I guess people will be more optimistic. Uh, a couple of things. So I have to ask permission every time I want to follow up like Dana, or is this just a good habit? No, you can do whatever okay, you like. Uh, I thought it was pretty, uh, one thing is pretty clear. If uh, the reason why people are pessimistic is the fundamental issues that have gone wrong, not little things. It's not like a cultural issue that we're on the other side of it where you can sit there and have a good debate at a barbecue. Can I continue? Yes. Thank you. Uh, I was going to talk about, if you talk about voting, that's a fundamental part of our democracy. We're debating that. And it, I think this totally inaccurate way and in they're being portrayed. When you talk about crime, that's a fundamental way in which we live. When you talk about inflation, that's the things we buy from the smallest to the biggest. Everything that seems to be challenged on a regular basis. So it's Going, I do not, no longer feel confident, and I can actually see the 20 point drop over the last three months just from talking to people. And when it comes to crime, this really has changed. Remember, uh, six months ago, it was all about uh, the cops are the problem. Mm -hmm. And the cops just took a step back and said, Take my badge, and I'm going to retire, mm -hmm. or I quit. And now every single one of these major cities is depleted. It's like breaking up with a girl and say, see how life is at like without me. And then watching her life spiral down. That's never happened to you.
And also, you're supposed to ask permission before right. you use an analogy. Yes. I look, do you assume that when they break up with you, their life gets worse? <laughs> yes, that's what I assume. It's, it's, I'm just saying. Every it's guy not, thinks that way. Right. And it's, and it's not true. It's not no, true. You're running over my analogy. Okay. No, I never even brought it in. But that's what I'm saying. And then in front of you, watch that person miss you in front of you over the last year and say, do you want back in? That's yes. what the cops are doing. The, they're out there and go, what is life like without me? That's yeah. all I got. Like in Baltimore, where they're asking for 100 federal agents now to come in and help. Yeah, I don't, and I don't even think that the, the opposite of optimism is pessimism. It's hopelessness, mm. you know? And hopelessness, Richard, arrives when you, when you feel like you're in, you have no impact or your influence is futile. Like you're talking about how much crime there is, but no one's doing anything. That's more hopelessness than pessimism, and I think that might be driving this. What do you think? Well, look, when you watch videos like the video we just saw there, or you see a video of a police officer beating somebody up, it doesn't matter. It's disgusting to watch either of these cases, right? And neither of these things should be happening in our streets. And I think that is where, the, that's, I think, where people are. I think where people are, and I think a Gallup poll points to this that was done last year, especially in, in, in black communities, they're saying, look, we want, we like the presence of police. Oftentimes, we feel like we're, we're not treated with respect and dignity and encounter the police officers. So it's how do we create a balance here? How do we ensure that when police are in our communities, we're treated with respect? But how do we also deal with the crime that's happening in our community, whether it's the, the solving the case of little Naya in, in Washington, D.C., where I live, or it's ensuring that here in New York City, 65-year-old men don't get beat up by crazy people, right? right, which is what's happening. And so we've got to figure out how we rebalance this, which is where we are. Right now, the system is unbalanced. And to some extent, to Dana's point, um, you know, yes, I think the White House has to do a little bit more, and the president has to have a little bit of a stronger footing. He has, he has put out a plan. Only about guns. He seems to only no, talk but about No, but I think that's because that, that's part of the problem, right? When no, you, and more police, right? He said you could yeah, use you, COVID relief money to hire more police. Right, dig into your savings. But, but that's part of it. You have to hire more police, remembering that the number one killer of police last year was coronavirus, right? That's, that's according to Officer Down. The number one killer of police officers last year was COVID-19. So to, in order to get more boots on the ground, we have to hire more police. That's what Mario Bowser is doing in the city of D.C. She's taking the money from the, COVID, the American Rescue Plan, and she's using it to put more police on the ground. You know, um, I want to get to Dagan. Um, Richard brought up the black communities. I find it interesting that I don't, I think you're right. It's the black communities that are concerned about crime, but all you see are the white leftists, the Antifas and Absolutely. the activists that are out there talking about defunding more than anybody, and they don't have to live with the consequences. Right, I, th I think I use the term soft bigotry. Yeah. It's the soft bigotry that they, uh, that people on the left ignored this for the last year and a half when it was hurting uh, communities throughout major cities, uh, particularly uh, black and Latino communities, but only when it arrives at their doorstep, like mm -hmm. the shooting down in D.C., do they start giving a flying damn about it, mm -hmm. right? Oh, oh, okay, the I'm the out. Diplomat. I left yes, my... The diplomat. The diplomat. You might have heard of that restaurant, yeah. Dana. Yeah. Jim Acosta goes there. He's just a lousy tipper. Oh, <laughs> anyway, I, I left my doorman building, and I heard shots when I was out dining with my fancy friends, and now I start Don Lemon caring. and I had a great meal there. Uh, <laughs> you admit to that? <laughs> no, I'm um, what amplifies the pessimism or hopelessness that you were talking about or exacerbates it is the total disconnect between what people are seeing and hearing in their everyday lives otherwise known as reality, mm -hmm. and the garbage that the left and liberals in power have been regurgitating uh, in, the, in people's faces. And, and what I mean is, our city is dangerous. <laughs> Uh, let me let me explain. You just don't understand. Right. Or Gavin Newsom saying, "Well, crime is. I don't know what you're Crime's talking about. Down. Crime's down in the last 30 years." Or Joe Biden saying, "Defund the police." We never said defund the police. They're lying about it. Or inflation. Oh, it's running at the fastest pace in 13 years to 30 years if you look at core prices. That's just transitory. Th that's just a right wing talking point. The left, they are compulsively dishonest and also irretrievably stupid that they can't see what is in the f in the face of every American and just one thing that's happening I found this really interesting Gallup did a, a poll on confidence in institutions that came out a couple of weeks ago confidence for all institutions is down this year except for one the police right mm -hmm. down the most for public schools because the teachers unions essentially trampled on children across the country for their own power and the medical system in part because of the poor messaging from 
Washington. Yeah. But I think but I think to just think about it as just the police is not the way to look at it. When you think about a community where little Naya died right in Washington, see this also a community that doesn't have access to broadband internet, right? This is a community that doesn't have resources, they don't have jobs. So if you look at the if you look at a map of DC, where's the where but no, but I'm talking about a broader problem that yeah. exists in this but that, community. But when you make but it if you just, broader, but if you just think you never about never focus on the problem, no, 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 but, if you, about the broad but, issues. but if you're just sitting here if you're sitting here and just having a conversation about oh, how do we solve the crime, one way to solve the crime is by providing opportunity. If you can't get online and look for a job in this community because you don't have broadband internet, I'm also then for, you have a problem. I'm, I'm for opportunity and I'm for people, bad guys, having to stay in jail. Exactly. Because that's what the chief yeah. of, well, no, the no, chief of police in, in uh, Washington, D.C. just gave a press conference this weekend. Yeah. And he's furious about it. He Absolutely, said, because the courts aren't open. He even yeah. used... <laughs> I think we, may, we have to make a right-wing talking point pro-crime because that's the only way the Democrats are going to be anti-crime right. because this is all politically motivated. Yep. Coming up Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.